Simple idea, how do we make decisions? That's what we're gonna talk about today, so let's get right into it. First thing that we do is we begin and then we start looking at, well, going, we formulate goals, we go through various, okay, and then we got alternatives, and then we got frameworks, <laughs> then we've got, okay, none of that works. <laughs> we begin, we make a snap judgment, and we rationalize. <laughs> it's much easier to remember. Let's start with engagement, because engagement begins the process of how we start to think about things. And with every type of decision that we make, there are ultimately three types of engagement. You're either hyper-engaged, less engaged, or unengaged. Now, we used to think of engagement as kind of a binary process. You were either engaged or unengaged. But now we're seeing more and more that there's this less engaged, middle set. And I want to just kind of walk you through what that looks like when we have someone who's less engaged. So, for example, we're going to start with the place that most of us are really interested in. We spend a lot of time and energy looking at this particular topic. Of course, it is sports. Football. In the United States, roughly 60 million Americans play fantasy football. If you don't know what fantasy football is, it takes a tremendous amount of time to choose your, your stock of players that will determine whether or not you're better than your friend. Of course, you are better than your friend, but that's a different thing. Now, I don't want you to think that 60 million Americans is roughly the same number of people that voted for Donald Trump. That's unrelated. It's unrelated. And it's not just sports in the United States. In Canada as well, we'll see people are very hyper-engaged about the, the hockey. But you'll see in places, some people are more hyper-engaged. For example, in Calgary, we have a more hyper-engaged population about hockey than you would say in Tennessee, somewhere along there. But what about something as mundane as dishwashers? <laughs> There's not many people who are hyper-engaged on dishwashers. But all of us are less engaged in dishwashers, and you know how I know? When your dishwasher breaks. You become very interested in dishwashers when your dishwasher breaks. <laughs> You're not unengaged. It's not like you say, you know what, I don't care if my dishwasher broke. You do care if your dishwasher broke. So how do we get that together, and how do we track that along? Now, dishwashers may not be very important. It may not be a big deal. Dishwasher breaks. No one's setting a national agenda or anything like that. But we do have politics, and in politics we see the same thing. See, people are less engaged, dominate. The number of people who really care about politics is very small compared to the number of people who don't really care about politics. And they'll vote based on kind of a decision-making process that follows from getting engaged or getting a piece of information. That's what I really want to impart today, is how we make these decisions, not just in dishwashers, but in politics and all other things. So let's just take a moment and really look at what does it mean to be engaged, hyper-engaged, and less engaged. Now, all of us are all of these things at the same time. There are issues that we think and we are hyper-engaged about. Hyper-engaged. We care a tremendous amount. We know a tremendous about, amount about them. But other things we don't. For example, I don't know that there's actually an engine in my car. I have no idea. But I do have a car. That's the type of engagement that we're looking for. The, le the hyper-engaged know all these different things, and they are ready to make a decision. In fact, they've already made their decisions. They know enough that the decision can be made immediately. But the less engaged, the unengaged don't know they're making a decision at all. They don't know that there's a decision to be made. I never have made a decision to watch the Jersey Shore. Just throwing it out there. There's many things that we don't choose to do, right? Uh, we drove today past a, a football game, a high school football game. It looked like fun. I had no idea it was happening because I'm completely unengaged. 
I couldn't care less. The less engaged, though, are people that do want to, to, that may want to watch that high school football game, may want to go to the CFL football game, may want to vote, may want to make a decision in that, in that category. How do they make decisions there? Well, my hypothesis is that the less engaged make decisions basically the same way that Schrodinger thought of his cat. Both decisions, yes or no, blue or red, green or orange, go or stop, are available to you in the less engaged at the exact same time. It's how we choose to open the box that's going to dictate our response to the question. How we respond to the individual fact that we're being presented with or the question that we're being asked. Just merely being asked the question. One of the interesting things about polling is when you're just asked the question, all of a sudden you start answering the question. You may not have thought about it at all. Which party are you going to vote for in the next election? You may not have thought about it, but the fact that you were asked about it gives you the right to answer it. And so at that moment, when you're asked the question, you immediately flip on, and now you're engaged. You were less engaged, and now you're engaged. You've opened the box. Now the question is, is the cat alive or dead? <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't talk about cats anymore. <laughs> Let's go back to dishwashers. Your dishwasher broke. Do you want the front-loading cutlery tray or the top-loading cutlery tray? Well, your mother-in-law has a top-loading cutlery tray. She loves it. Which one do you buy? Well, what's your relationship with your mother-in-law? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we used to think of politics in this way. We left and right, right and left. Everybody was put into camps. Well, there are definite camps. People are in that place. Lots of people sit in those places and they're like that. But now we're starting to think of it a little bit more like this. People are available all over the place. They can go into the different camps depending on what the different circumstances are. It's not just politics. With political issues as well. How do you feel? Are you liberal, conservative? Pro-vaccination, anti-vaccination, climate action deny, climate change denier. It all depends on which piece of information you're being fed and by whom. You know, if the CEO of your company comes in and tells you you're no longer a climate change denier, then maybe you're no longer a climate change denier. That piece of information may change it. Well, how? And that's where biases come in. So we're going to take the next four minutes and 38 seconds and go through all of these biases. <laughs> okay, we're not. I'm going to put this up here because I couldn't find a graphic to show confirmation bias. But we know these lines are straight. We know this graphic's not moving. We know this ball's not moving. But our brains aren't playing nicely with us. Our brains tell us something that's not true, and that's bias. So confirmation bias is us just looking for a piece of information that we want to know. And so we grab that and we latch onto it. What other biases are important? Well, I think, frankly, the false consensus effect is super important. Are we alike? Are we the same? Are people who we talk to the reflection of society? Well, the people I talk to will never vote conservative. The people I talk to will never vote liberal. It's a false consensus. Then we have the ostrich effect. When we ignore information that may change our minds, it's the ostrich effect. Mostly I keep this because I just love the graphic. But it's a tremendously important way of looking at how we see information. There it is. The Dunning-Kruger effect. This is my favorite. Okay, the confidence on the y-axis, expertise. We expect this to be a straight line, right? The less we know, the more conf you know, the less confident we are, and it goes up. Truth is, we've got this little peak at the beginning. Then we go down into a massive trough, and then we climb our way back out again. I like to think of this as being a, a person, right? When we're young, we're gathering expertise, and then when we hit 19, oh, I knew it all when I was 19. <laughs> Best day ever. Then I walked out of the hospital with our firstborn. I knew nothing. <laughs> I've been climbing my way back since then. 
You'll be pleased to know that we're talking about the peak of Mount Stupid in the Valley of Despair. <laughs> every time, every time I sit down with people and they say, you know what we need to do? We get, need to give people more information. I think of the Dunning-Kruger effect. We just need to give them more information. Oh, great. We'll move them from stupid to despair. That's perfect. <laughs> That's a great plan. <laughs> I just love that. We're, okay, I'm okay. <laughs> Last bias I want to talk about. I've been studying this now for a number of years. I know about this. And regardless, I still got the bias, bias blind spot. I can't see my own biases. I can't see how they're impacting me. I've studied this a lot, and I still don't know how it actually works. On me, on how I make my decisions. I will tell you, though, that Subaru thinks that I'll buy a car because they have 19 cup holders. They know me so well. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to do an evaluation. So let's just finish this up. We're talking about how engagement, bias, and decision leads us into a reason and a rationale. The reason is not rational. The reason is the, re is, is the why we make the decision, and it's all based on our biases and how the information is presented to us. And the rationale is the thing that we do afterwards to justify it. The rationale is us cherry-picking a piece of data and saying, that's why I chose to support this. Or I voted for XYZ candidate because blank. The blank part is usually made up after we've made the decision. That's the rationale. So the reason we make a decision is inside of us. What's important to realize, though, is just because it's not clearly understood, it doesn't mean it's not predictable. We can predict all of this based on understanding people's values and rationale and biases. And so I just want to finish it with this and just show you. We go through engagement. We make our less engaged decisions like Schrodinger's cat. We, we rem must remember that the bias itself creates the outcome. And then we'll do a post hoc rationalization. I hope that that's what you'll remember today. Maybe some of the jokes. But thank you very much for having me. <laughs>